repping Team Roddy with that sexy Phoenix logo. It is Aquaron. Yeah, man. Another another weird Britishism. I find that the the European casters tend to pronounce his name as Aquaron, whereas the Americans want to say <laughs> Aquaron, so, uh, which both are correct. I spoke to him about this in oh. depth. Give us Dreamhack tea. 4, he messaged me about how to say his name, and we spent two days trying to break it down. I even got my Spanish housemate to help me. Wow. And it is Acheron. Acheron? It's not Aqueron. That's what no, I that's, used to say. Just, and he kicked my ass for it. It is... It, it's, I don't know. No one knows. I still don't know. Um, that's fine. Jim. We'll call him Jim. A yeah. laser versus Jim. Ruben. This is real name. <laughs> even better. Oh, I love a good Reuben. Uh, hatch gas pool <laughs> out for a laser and a Reaper opener for uh, Akron. You know, Grant, we've been yeah. saying it all morning, but it's day one of the competition. Oh, yes. Now is not the time to cheese, right? No. Uh, there's a reason we haven't been seeing proxy barracks all over the place. You know, Bl Bly excluded because he always does. But we haven't <laughs> been seeing proxy barracks or, or, or triple proxy gateways into mass mm -hmm. zealot. Right? You know, that kind of nonsense is better safe for maybe the middle of the tournament. Um, but right now, all of these players want to put their best foot forward. They want to start out strong in their groups with a 1-0 record. And don't forget, guys, these players earn a cash prize yep. for every match they win. 125 US dollars in their pocket for each best of three. That is not a bad rate for a best of three, Grant. That's more than we get for the entire tournament, Crayon. <laughs> now look these players these players have worked so hard to get here it, oh, yes. it's not a question of whether they deserve it or not nope. uh, it's just a question of how difficult it is to earn i mean you talked about it earlier this group so stacked i yep. remember when the uh, announcement came out on i think it was monday of the or tuesday of the groups monday of the groups monday and yeah. everyone said uh group b looks terrifying just so scary as you said probably six of these eight players are all viable candidates mm -hmm. for, the, for the top four, if not the top two, two. spots. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Now, a laser, typically one of the top, top European Zergs that we have probably third behind Serral and uh, Raynor. Uh, had a lot of success last year, maybe not quite as much in the last 12 months, but he'll be looking to, you know, replicate previous form. He'll be looking to explode and have a great tournament and challenge for a title. Um... And, and Acheron, really up and coming, very young, signed for Team Rotti alongside Goblin uh, to showcase these up and coming players and move them on to bigger and better things in the future. He wants that breakout tournament. Goblin had it at IEM where he got a top eight, uh, mm -hmm. but Acheron not had that incredible result yet. And it is due. Uh, he's very, very good, especially in mass bio scenarios where he can get eight Raxes and two, two and push hard. Oh, yeah. Um and, and I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that. It's not amazing here on Pillars of a Gold because there's not a lot of places to, to defend your tanks. This is typically a Zerg favored map, and I imagine this was a laser's pick. Um, right. But we are seeing pretty standard openings here. A Viking, usually going to be followed by that Liberator. The Viking should clear the way here of Overlords uh, for, for a Liberator to come in and try and find a bit of damage, but we'll see if that's going to be the case. Or it will just be a Viking into tech here. Uh, for now, everything looking okay, though. A couple of SCVs going down here to some Ling run by free. This is a little bit sloppy. You don't want to be losing this many early on. Ah, but there's that Liberator queued up, Graham. You know, one Liberator is not as scary as it used to be, Grant. These Zerg players are getting so good at rotating yeah. queens, at rotating spore crawlers, at yeah. making sure their drones are mining from the right place. But I want to point out really quickly how aggressively Laser, Laser has been guarding the front door of his third base. He took mm -hmm. those four gases very early after yep. his, as soon as his Lair Tech started up. He took those four gases. If a Zerg player goes for four gases on three bases with their Lair Tech, they're almost certainly going for Spire. If you yeah. see three gases, more likely it's going to be Speed Roaches, right? Yep. But with the fourth gas taken and saturated up, he's going for Spire, and that's why he's been so aggressive with these queens at his natural. Not protecting his third, not saturating it up at all. Yeah. Hiding hiding the amount of gases so that Acheron, Acheron does not know that he's going up against Ling, Bane, Muta. And I think yep. now that Acheron has seen this third base unsaturated, he might suspect, hey, wait a minute, where the hell are all your drones? Why do you not have that third saturated yeah, up yet? You're right. I haven't seen how many gases you have What's going on here? He's got a good idea. Yeah, he's going to try and go for the YOLO push here with his Hellions. Not going to be able to get anything. Mm -hmm. We'll lose a couple, but gets a bit of information here. Sees the amount of Lings. Does see the Baneling Nest, of course, researching. Uh, and is able to, to keep a laser on his feet uh, without too much damage. Behind this double eBay's going down. Lots of Rax is being added on. Stims on the way. Marines, Marines, Marines. And we will see Missile Turrets. I am certain very shortly as the eBay's finish up here. 
because Acheron has to know what this is. Like, there's no way he doesn't at this point. Uh, he did see that there were no drones on the third for an exceptionally long time. And plus this sort of two slash two and a half base muter play is quite trendy. Uh, we're right. seeing a lot of it. It's very good on this map especially. You can get between the main natural and the triangle third with muters very easily. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there we go. Free missile tower is already on the way. Acheron isn't going to die by any means. This isn't catching them off guard. Uh, but he's not been able to slow the Zerg player down, and that's very, very scary for a Terran. Yeah, a couple things. As you said, uh, not able to slow the Zerg player down, which is a big deal. The Mutalists, by the way, have made themselves known now. But can we also point out that Acheron has not done a great job of stopping that, cre uh, uh, of uh, clipping back the creep spread from a laser at the same time? A laser has not done an amazing job spreading that creep. We're going to see this game, Grant, go into my one of my favorite uh, oh, builds. Yes of all time there is to me nothing more pure about the starcraft experience than a tvz that is marine medevac tank or marine medevac mine even versus ling bane muta that is like the core quintessential starcraft. starcraft right yeah macro micro positioning yep. engage like everything that you want to see in an exciting starcraft game this matchup has it and i can't wait to see if he laser is able to hold up against as you said earlier the very strong bio mm. uh prowess of acheron and acheron is doing something a little bit different to what he was doing mainly in uh dreamhack fall and as he's adding on a second uh factory he's gonna produce probably a lot of widow mines if i were to guess right now his composition yep is just Hellions, and there we go, the Widow Mine production is beginning. And he's yeah. really gonna look, instead of going for the 2-2 the two -two all in, we should see a fourth CC coming down not too long here. Um, and and the uh, the power up into uh, Marine Medevac Mines, which I love as well. I think Mines offer so much uh, potential for fun. This was a very nice push. The Hellions have lost a lot of value uh, mm -hmm. as the game has gone on. Getting nine drones, it could have been better, of course, but it did slow down a laser a little bit. And now Akron pretty even on work accounts. If we take a look at the income right now. He is mining more, of course, because mules are sick. Uh, and his bio army getting very strong. Burrow. Oh, we're getting everything we want, Creighton Elson. It's, it's amazing. You'll love to see it. Some burrowed banelings. A laser, a player who never shies away from burrowed banelings. Rarely do you get a chance to get them shown off, but they work so, so well. Uh, look, Grant, you said earlier, we're going to see a, a Akron into... May, uh, mutalisk mine no let's try that's all over again <laughs> Akron's not gonna get mutalisks he's gonna be marine medevac mine right. and that is not only a great way to start the mid and mid mm -hmm. to late game but also gives you a very smooth transition into a strong late game yes. you guessed it thor push as well mm -hmm. uh getting the thors on the map gonna be essential but when you have mines down the terran player isn't forced to like rush into thors right and try and get one yep. out before they can really support it with marines and then they're like why can't i hold all these banelings and the banelings destroy the thors or whatever um Akron is gonna have a smooth transition now from the mines Bailing. into thors later in the game Bailing's trying to roll in here. They do manage to get in and kill a few workers and soften up a lot more. If the upgrade was finished, that would have been a very, very scary um, run by there. They would have killed a fair few more. You can see constantly, if you look at the mini-map, there are splodges of blue at the north side and at the south side getting ready for run -bys, be it muters, be it Bailing's or Ling's. Very, very nice here. But Acheron's handling it well. He's getting drilling claws as well. Uh, his 2-2 getting close to completion. Four's already on the way. Now, a laser will be looking to transition most likely eventually towards Ultralisks. That's very, very difficult here. And there we go, the infestation pit going down as I speak for the Terran player to deal with because all of his racks are, are um, reacted. He doesn't have Marauders on the field. He doesn't have ghosts. He doesn't have uh, tanks or anything like that. This is a very, very aggressive push here with the Muters and Acheron slow to react. Widow Mines though. No. Okay, doesn't manage to get anything massive here. This is very good. Actually, a laser starting to find a little bit of scary damage, I'd say. He's just killed 20 workers. He's just halved the work count of his opponent. And it looks like Akron knows he's taken too much damage and is going to be looking for some of his own. Yeah, Akron's got a push here. Caught just out of position here. The Marine's not in the Go. right spot. Trying to defend Go. a third and fourth base. Bainley's getting some more shots as well. Akron's only Go. hope now <laughs> is to push, 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 and push hard. He's waiting too long, though. Mowing down some queens, but look at this. Flood of links and Banes yeah. doesn't even need to get a full uh, a flank on these armies. He's got so many, he can just surround them uh, like a pastry surrounding some cream nom, cheese. Nom, 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 just nom, 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 gorgeous. 
from uh, a laser there. Aquaron's gonna try and drop in the main, and look, it's all very cute, it's a nice play, but the income out of control for a laser right now, who's already maxed out, starting to bank those minerals. He can throw away one army and build a second one right behind this. Aquaron with the second flank on the east side, but uh, it's gonna take way more than Aquaron's able to pump out here. The game not over yet, Grant, but the fat lady is certainly warming up in the green room right now. I'm not a fat lady. Um, no, no, it's a, it's a figure of speech, <laughs> I know, Grant. I know. And as I said earlier, the hive already on the way. A laser has built himself time, he's bought himself time even, to be able to transition towards Ultralisks or, or Broodlords, although I'd be very surprised at that. But he can get cracklings, he can get everything he needs to close this game out. Acheron is down 80 supply crate and Elson. And a laser showing that incredible form that he's known for as one of those top, top three Zerg players in Europe. One of the top in the world. It's going to be very difficult. Some magic four shots, some magic widow mines. We've seen it before and we'll see it again. It can be done. It can happen. But Acheron needs a little bit of a miracle right now. He needs you to put your arms in the air and channel the spirit bomb. <laughs> because things are looking Let's a little rough. This is a good can... start. Yeah, this is a, a pretty good start, but honestly, five kills, not enough. He's going to try and make it into same. another drone line. Look, he could get 20 kills here, and a laser would still be 20 drones ahead. A, a laser uh, <laughs> that misses a shot out of the Overlords. 14 kills, but the Lings and Banes going in. Now we're going to see the Banes going on to the, the Marines here. Decent splitting from Acheron, but there's, there's just medivacs. too much work in a laser's army. Yeah, there's one medevac here. The Thor's going to get surrounded, try and save them. It's just not enough. And again, even though he lost a lot of drones there, look at a laser. 14 more Mutalisks in production, yep. 32 more Lings. He's finished the Hive. He, he doesn't have Cracklings yet at all. Actually, it hasn't even started that uh, that uh, Adrenal Glands upgrade yet, but I honestly don't think we're going to see Elaser transition this game. I think three or four minutes ago, we could have been thinking about yeah. Ultralisks. That might have been reasonable, but since Akron has been hamstrung so significantly, he's going to be trying to rebuild that bio army. I think we're going to see Elaser staying on Ling Bane Muta for the yeah. rest of this game, I mean, and I really working, doubt right? we'll see anything else. It, what was that? It, it's working. So yeah. if you know if it works, why why take a risk? And now we see adrenal glands and free free coming in, and unfortunately for Acheron, he's done what so many Terran players do. He's only started one plus three upgrade. He's probably you know he may have them queued up. I'm not certain on the same uh, eBay, but this isn't good. He's also not been able to get into things like vehicle upgrades. He's got plus one vehicle armor, uh, uh, but he's not able to get the the weapons here. And GG, he can't break through. And a laser picks up map one. You know, it's so funny, Grant. At the end of that game, you said uh, something about how Elaser wouldn't want to risk going mm -hmm. into something like Ultralisk or Broodlords. And that's such a smart observation from you. There's a reason that Elaser stayed on low tech units. There's a reason he stayed on unit on those low tech units for so long, not just because a transition into high tech units causes you to be at a, a bit of a danger because you're investing in infrastructure rather than army. So even though Elaser had you know so much army, it really didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, there's still that small moment in time where you're pumping money into infrastructure instead of a, a, of armor or instead of army, and that's very dangerous to work with there. It gives the, uh, the Terran a chance to sort of overwhelm you with a surge yeah. of power. And secondly, if you're investing into heavy upgraded units like Ultralisks, like Broodlords, those tier three tech, uh, what you're doing is concentrating risk at one yes. place on the map. The reason Ling Bane Muta is so successful is that as a player, you spread your risk uh -huh. over the map completely. So if one Bane Ling rollby doesn't work, you've got another one. It's still a low risk investment onto one side of the map. Whereas if you got five Ultralisks all clumped together and you lose them to some bad snipes or something your entire risk pool has been destroyed it's like it's like going yolo on tesla stocks you just lose everything on one day so very smart play long term from a laser and that's why we said at the beginning of the game he is one of those players who is never afraid to go to a, a late game scenario always happy to push it past the 10 15 20 minute mark yeah. because he's so confident in making those uh critical strategy decisions in the late game yeah, just, just incredible play uh, from a laser there. He didn't make mistakes from what I can tell. Of course, I'm I'm not a player at that level. Uh, so he, he may have done some some small mistakes, but nothing substantial. He didn't give Acheron an in. He didn't give him any inroads to find substantial damage. And as, I mean, it's been said for, for almost 10 years now, you cannot allow a Zerg player to go unharassed. You have to slow them down as a Terran player because if they can get that massive army and get to Hive Tech, they are almost unbeatable. For now, Creighton Olsen, do you want to introduce our first player? I would love to. This kid is so good. I can't wait to see more of him. Spawning in the bottom right hand side of Death Aura LE in the blue, it is our Terran player representing Spain and Team Roddy. It's Akaran. 
And his opponent in the top left. He is up a map. Playing for Argo Esports. He is the Red Zerg player from Poland. It's a laser. You want to hear a fun map fact about Death Aura, Grant? I always do. Underneath the main bases on Death Aura here. Yeah. So like all the other bases have a little little circle next uh -huh. to show you where the base is supposed to go, right? Mm -hmm. Underneath the main bases, there's this circle, but there's also a glowing green crystal really? underneath the main bases that you, that you never see unless the main base lifts off or Lift is it. destroyed. <laughs> yep. Right, come on, Aqua. I'll, I'll talk to him in chat. Aqua, pause the game. Lift up your thing. A laser. Take, uh, uh, send a drone out so it's so it's even and fair. But yeah, underneath <laughs> the main base, there's a little tiny, a little tiny like green sick. glowing. It looks like a little. Um, if you ever played the Undead race in Warcraft Three, it kind of looks like one, like a like a like a crystal from from yeah, Undead. Yeah, it it, it yeah, looks really cool. Little little Easter egg hidden on the map. These maps are it. full of them. Yeah. Uh, God, our map makers are so freaking good, Grant. Yep. So freaking good. I know. It's insane. You think back and you think steps of war. Metalopolis, mm. how far we've mm. come. <laughs> For now, like this game is opening up standard. We do have a Reaper expand. We do have a hatch gas pool by the looks of things here from a laser. There is no shenanigans. I don't think either of these players are shenanigany. I wouldn't be surprised to see Acheron go back to what he does. And he's he's done it on this map as well, which is that eight racks all in off of three CCs. No four CC, you right. get two, two, you get three, two to three siege tanks and you just go and you hope. Yeah, um, you just ram, you just ram your big thick army up the oh middle of. Oh my god, I, I know where you're going with that. Then. Uh, yeah, no, yes. it's, it's a gorgeous play, and I really hope we see Aquaron going for it at some point. I think that's probably one of his better chances against a yeah, late game player like a laser. You know, catch him in the middle of the game when he's maybe uh, just doing a little bit too much navel gazing, which is something a laser really can do. I mean, there's a reason a laser overlords are a joke, right? Is that sometimes <laughs> he just gets so deep into his builds and so deep into his infrastructure that he does lose a bit of focus on the rest of the map around him. Yeah. Uh, again, it's very rare to see him do that, and especially against a player like Aquaron, who I know he has played millions of times. Uh, yeah. But that's probably one of Acheron's best bets here, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him going for something like that, a mid-game focused push where he really abuses that power that all Terrans have, mm -hmm. which is that Terrans, more than any other race in the game, have these surges of power. They have little waves of power where they're yeah. strong for a little while, and then they're weak for a little while, and they're yeah. strong for a little while, and they're weak for a little while. And Acheron is a player who, as you said, is very good at fighting those those peaks and yes. avoiding the troughs. Very much like Euphermal. Euphermal, I would say, is He's a slightly more complete Acheron, being a more experienced player. He he can throw in a little <laughs> bit more aggression. He will throw out a proxy racks. He bloody loves a Reaper. Um, but he's very, very good at finding just moments in the game. Just 30 second windows where you can do so much damage. And guys, while you're all here, thank you so much for joining us here. This is day one of two weeks of B-Stream action. We'll be here five days this week, six next. So please make sure you tune in, tell your friends, tell everyone, tweet out, uh, because you're going to see a lot of us in the next few weeks. And, uh, yeah, and I couldn't be more excited. Couldn't yeah, ask for a better co-caster here on the beach. It's a lot of fun, Oh, man. A couple links going to sneak in here for E-Laser. Not into the main base, but they probably will see yet. Yeah, I'll see that factory going, and they only see four Hellions out, and that's usually indicative. When a Zerg player sees only four Hellions on the map, they know, like, hey, wait a minute, something's going on here. Yeah. I believe the laser has seen the starport, and he might have some suspicion that this drop is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, double Widow Mine into the medevac, followed up by a Liberator. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of a single Liberator harass. I said it last game. I, I just don't yeah. think Zerg players are intimidated to single Liberators anymore. Uh, by single what? liberators anymore, but oh, now this is interesting for me. Uh, from uh, Acheron, rather, is he gonna? Oh my God, is he gonna go into the main base with Hellions and then redrop into the natural? What is he up to here? No armor yet, so no Hellbats. Uh, this is really interesting from uh, from Acheron to trade away from this uh, Widow Mine drop into a four Hellion drop, spotted immediately though by a laser. Yeah, well, a laser is expecting Widow Mines to be in that dropship, and that isn't what it is. It is the. Um, it, it, it is the race cars here, the Hellions. Uh, he isn't going to be able to find an inroad, so this is very nice defense here from a laser. Hot so Wheels good. cars, not going to be able to find any damage today. Behind this, third CC, stim on the way. A few more Hellions to keep uh, map control and make sure no big lings uh, pressure can come and end the game. And, and we're seeing, I mean, this is EU TVZ 2AT. A laser's going up to 10 queens, though. Is this snoot I'm watching? 
I, I know, right? This is insane. So many queens, but hey, it's a really smart play, right? Yeah. He's got a bunch of them at the. He's got a bunch of them at the third base here, defending against the drop. The lings have actually moved away from the main, so uh, he may have thought he pushed away this widow mine drop, but in fact, the widow mine drop is coming in, and now he laser should have expected a very late pull from a laser. If that widow mine drop had gone down a little bit sooner, he actually might have gotten some real damage done. But that's going to be picked off really picked quickly. Up, uh, yeah, really good defense there. A couple a couple drones going down at the fourth base, uh, but only five drones picked off. Elays are still at 54. And, and Grant, if we could take a minute, as, as there's there's not much going on, as we see, of course, Akron powering up, Akron powering up uh, yeah. to uh, five gates. Really quickly, I just want to point out something you said at the very beginning of the game that I wanted to oh. expound on a little bit. Uh, one of the reasons that StarCraft is so damn good is that those of us who watch StarCraft every single day and talk about it professionally, we know we're like, wow, okay, so this, this Widow Mind drop is a little bit more in the meta right now, and that's mm -hmm. exciting, and you know, but there's also this huge thread over 10 years, 20 years of play, if you count Brood War, yeah. where the, the StarCraft design team has done an amazing job of maintaining the overarching, the big story of the game. Uh, while keeping all the meta and the little stories changing as well. And that's something that's really difficult for a game to do. Yeah. Uh, as I just, you said at the beginning, you're like, it, it doesn't matter what's happening in the meta. It doesn't matter what year you're watching. It doesn't matter if you go back to 20, 2012 and watch a StarCraft II game from the, like the MLG days. Mm. If you don't harass a Zerg early in the game, you're gonna have a bad time as a yep. Terran player. That has always been true, it will always be true. It's baked into the DNA of our eSport, and that's one reason StarCraft is so long-lived that I don't think a lot of people don't think about, is that the little stories are still here and changing Ooh. every week, but the big stories stay the same. Nice volley there, I completely agree with you, Creighton, and that's yeah. why certain legendary players have that status, players like MVP, who would constantly, he wouldn't need to do the damage very early, because he could get into the mid game and just drop with like 11 drop ships at a time and, and you'd just be like what's going on maru who can who can be that very aggressive player this was a good defense although the tanks may be doing a little bit more damage than they need to that's a lot of friendly fire 12 scvs i thought it was good for a minute but now i take it back it was it was a, a shite um What's really funny is if you look at the unit's loss tab, you'll see only five of those SCVs actually killed by Lings. The other go. seven all okay. killed by that siege tank. Yep. Oh, man. Armory not finished up yet to this. They're not going to be Hellbats in this push. And again, with the laser's hilarious queen number, uh, he's going to drive those away. Uh, Grant, I'm sure you know this story, but the people watching might not. Did you know that there's a Korean clan whose nickname translates to... Uh, three hydralisks and they're complaining yes. about how strong queens yes. are in the early game it's basically like building a free hydralisk it's yep. one of my favorite korean clan facts ever yeah they've been around a long time too i mean yeah. there's a reason if you if you go to goblin stream and type in uh his name which is porn clone and tempest it comes up with a queen because they have like the range <laughs> of a tempest almost um i have a t-shirt with so that good. on that i made oh uh, nice. <laughs> my, nice a goblin shirt uh but Hydra's coming in here from a laser. A laser doing something a bit different and uh, playing that slightly more modern style of TVZ. It, it's been mm -hmm. around for a while, but it's certainly gaining a bit more prevalence with Rain or uh, using this a lot. And that is going Hydra's into Lurkers or just adding a few Hydra's in alongside yeah. um, the Lings and the Bane Lings. You can see there is no Spire this game. There is no Mutmuts flying around spreading that damage uh, and a laser is setting up very, very standard against Lingbei Muta with these widow mines and um, uh, tun uh, burrowed claw, tunneling claws, whatever you call it, um, as well. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not going to be that effective against Hydras. Yeah, exactly correct. Uh, Widow Mines are great against Ling Bane Muta. They're slightly less great against Hydras. Now, Hydras will still evaporate to a Widow Mine shot, but usually they're spread out a little bit more because Hydras like to get into that mm. just based on the AI pathing. They just like to get into those nice, neat rows and start mowing things down in, in yeah. like a beautiful concave, like a cathedral choir. Uh, and uh, the reason, of course, that a laser has gone for Hydras is you can't stay just on Ling Bane up against no. the, uh, the medevac play of a Terran player. Technically, of course, uh, if you have perfect micro and you're up against just Ling Bane with uh, medevacs and marines, you could technically micro all day perfectly yep. efficiently uh, if you were a machine because, of course, there's no air damage. The medevacs can, can like constantly micro back a little bit. Also, can we point out just how great these uh, burrowed uh, lings are from yeah. a laser everywhere? God, if those were burrowed bane lings, that would be just... Oh, no. De devastating. Anyway, so you got to transition to Hydras or Mutas once the Medivacs are on the map so that the Terran player isn't allowed to trade with impunity. These Banelings, unfortunately, going to get spotted here. I think they're all going to get canceled, but the laser's got to run by going back into the natural. Going to get on top of his tank, maybe? Uh, we'll see what he attacks here. But there's a big push from Akron up the north side. Yeah, and Akron has a good few tanks. He needs to get them into 
into angles where they can't be flanked. You can see already Akron is moving down to the south, looking for that 360 surround. And if the tanks get surrounded, they just aren't that effective if they have to split their fire. And here we mm -hmm. go. Akron moving in from multiple angles right now. The tanks oh. will go down so quickly and Bioforce to pick up and take off. And just an easy, easy cleanup here for a laser. Man, I, I don't want to be too uh, too over over positive about E Laser's play. He's getting it's dropped in the main as well, and, and there's a little bit of damage. Uh, but just like these, it's not just like his beautiful surrounds, good map awareness and everything. He will lose that uh, 12 o'clock base. I think we'll be able to defend at the main. But the 12 o'clock base gonna get focus fired down here. Oh, maybe not. Wow. Lots anyway, little time, micro yes. tricks that he's doing are just phenomenal. I don't know if you saw, he sent two lings out in front because he knew there were widow mines yep. protecting those tanks behind. Both widow mine shots go off onto the uh, on the lings, which are also right next to marines. Drags those widow mine shots. It's those little things that make him just an A plus plus player. And now he's yeah. trapped these um, trapped these medevacs in the backside. He can't actually attack them, but he's got vipers on the way, and they'll be able to give him some yoinks. And uh, this CC is just going to have to float there because apparently this massive multi-ton building can't land on top of one little bug um but that's okay uh that should be cleaned up by acheron shortly acheron did get a four cc he didn't go all in with the eight racks he did uh transition out of it knowing that it came quite late and now he is starting to add his tech options on but already 10 lurkers on the field the lurker Oof. upgrades coming in as well hive is done here for our zerg adrenal glands plus free armor plus free weapons has a uh, plus free melee has not started up which is uh, uh, a, a good thing here for acheron who is getting a free free of his own but mm -hmm. acheron is in it's gonna be difficult now he does have a good amount of bases sitting at uno dos tres at five maybe ish nice um, Fancy. thank you uh but i mean lurk is very difficult to deal with right now uh, how many tanks are we looking at at the moment? Eight. Oh, good tank number. Good tank number, and of course, with no um, no claws upgrade for those uh, for those lurkers, yeah. they're not able to burrow down quite as quickly. Meaning the tanks get a couple extra shots off on them. This is a beautiful concave of tanks defense. from Akron. A bit of it, yeah, a bit of an uh, ill-advised attack for our boy um, our boy Elaser, who who really yeah. went into a, a bit of a bloodbath there. I'm a little surprised to see him trading and really engaging with that. We did see a quadruple drop coming from Akron. I believe that got pulled back though. He needed to, needed decided to move into yeah. the middle of the map instead. We'll catch a couple lurkers. A laser might be able though to upset this upset this planetary fortress with a couple lurkers. No detection here at the fourth base for Akron. He's gonna lose this fourth base unless he responds to it quite quickly. He's got nothing to be able to respond to it though. He's got his entire army out on the map right now in these medevacs, and the lings are more than ready for it. A laser really doing a nice job defending so here cute. while being aggressive on the north side Just planetary a, fortress goes down a pocket of units ready for the for the um scvs to transfer he knew that they would have to transfer eventually two hydras mm -hmm. four or five lings with adrenal glands with great upgrades just able to completely pick them off and now we can see akron is starting to lose a fair few workers the, the, another base could go down here he really can't afford to be losing this much he needs to try and find some damage of his own uh, but he's just getting cleaned up everywhere supply still pretty even work account for acheron is still good at 71 his free free is getting closer and closer to completing his tank count still healthy at five soon to be six although i would like to see it maybe a little bit higher but look at all these cc's just in the air just chilling uh the hydra's trading pretty efficiently against a lot of marauders here there's not many marines and there's no tanks Finally, the tanks come to reinforce, but there's just not that much on the ground. And it looks like a laser is pushing Akron back. It looks like a laser is pushing in, possibly for the kill here. Uh, maybe Akron can push him back for now, but it's starting to look very dicey for the Spaniard. Yeah, a couple of really nice trades there for Acheron. They're trading fairly evenly. In fact, if you pull up the resources loss tab, you'll see it's almost identical for these players. Just about a thousand resources off in favor of a laser. But then compare that to the income graph. If you uh, shift I there, Grant, you'll see the income graph just wildly in favor of a laser this game completely. And if you let the Zerg player get that far ahead in the income graph, uh, you, you just simply cannot allow them to trade evenly with you. It's it's never going to happen. And he lays her way ahead now. 2k, 1k in the bank. Again, he can throw away all these lurkers, rebuild a whole other army, and uh, Akron really struggling. Can't even get this command center down at the uh, at the 7 o'clock base because there's a ling there just smiling up all cute at it and saying, please don't crush me. I'm yeah. too adorable. <laughs> uh, laser at this point has so much of the map as well. You look at the the sea of red that takes up almost half of the map, if not half of the map. We do have Acheron. He does get a kill on the oh. north side. That's a nice start. And Acheron supply is still supply. 
Um, but there is a big push now coming in at that central base. Vipers coming in, dropping uh, those those puddles of goo, stopping the vision here of these tanks. <laughs> a couple more lurkers do go down here. It does look like maybe once again Akron can hold, maybe, but he can't lose his CC. It's so low. Okay, he's gonna repair. Again, as we said earlier, though, even though uh, Elaser doesn't break this base and he doesn't really trade that efficiently, mm. he still has a pretty decent trade there, Grant, yeah. and he can afford, he can afford to it, yeah. have a decent trade. Count his bases. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and count the bases of, Ela of Acheron, rather, four. Four. So Ish. three bases ahead for Elaser, 89 workers to 67. Uh, he, he still has a decent bank. He, he's just spent his whole bank to rebuild his army, but that's going to come back. And whoa, look at this transition from Elaser. Double Spire yeah. coming down. Uh, he knows he's in a position of power right now and yes. have a little fun. Give himself more options as he goes into late game. Broodlords, of course, will trade much more efficiently into mm -hmm. this sieged up uh, turtley army from Akron. But now Akron has been pushed back so much. I can't, oh, burrowed Banelink, bless your heart there on the ramp. Uh, Grant, are you following my camera, or am I following yours this game? I'm sorry. I'm following Glide for some reason. Um, oh, that's weird. Close enough. Anyway, very cute stuff here from Aquaron, yeah. but it's just not quite enough. Elaser has kept him back on his side of the map for so long. Yeah. Elaser has complete control of the map right now. Going to unseat the 7 o'clock base yet again. This Lurker Hydra play just so good. And once the Brood Lords start coming out, once the Greater Spire finishes up, yeah. I don't think Aquaron has really any chance. And, uh, and he, he's Go ahead. Go on. Just to add to that, yeah, sure, the Liberators are nice and will offer a little bit. But there is Vipers, there is Hydra's able to get those yoinkity loodles and pick the uh, Liberators off quickly. A couple of Vipers will go down. There's actually not enough Hydra's here to support the Liberators. Uh, one more now coming in. We'll be able to pick these off alongside a Queen. But Acheron just has nothing left. We could see an Ultralisk Cavern go down. We could see an 